Neanderthals, or Homo neanderthalensis, are possibly our most famous ancestors. They walked, talked, fought, loved, and suffered just like us. Modern humans shared so much with Neanderthals. Their homes, ranges, hunting grounds, and even their cemeteries were left or ceded to us over Europe, Asia, and parts of Africa. When we discovered the Neanderthals' disappearance from the fossil records tens of thousands of years ago, we blamed climate change, the disappearance of megafauna, and competition from modern humans. The meeting between the two species was anything but short. But what actually happened when the latest branches of our family met so long ago? And what recent discoveries changed how we understand our meeting? Yeah. The science of archaic human history is a maze of possibilities, competing theories, conjecture, and fossil record gaps. Modern science has used incredible technologies to bring us closer to understanding our deep past. But keep in mind, the prevailing theories discussing both ancient modern humans and every one of our closest relatives tend to change and evolve with every new discovery. That being said, Neanderthals are one of the most well-known and discussed species of Homo, and there is a large and growing body of research regarding their history. For an in-depth look into Neanderthal life, look up our video about them, but we will give you a quick refresher. Neanderthals showed up in the fossil record around 400,000 years ago, plus or minus 100,000 years or more. There is a paleontological theory war going on when exactly Neanderthals became a separate group and how that happened. A major theory has waves of genetically distinct groups of Homo leaving Africa at different times, the remaining species in Africa evolving into a new wave hundreds of thousands of years later. Each group met with varying success, Neanderthals being one of the more widespread, if not very concentrated, group of hominins. Modern humans only started appearing in the fossil record at a maximum 125,000 years ago outside of Africa. Some theories only have them leaving Africa 60 to 70,000 years ago. There is an unexplained gap in the appearance of modern humans in Europe versus other areas. According to the fossil record, Homo sapiens showed up in parts of Asia 50 to 60,000 years ago. In Europe, it was believed until recently that modern humans only showed up some 40,000 years ago leading some paleontologists to think that higher populations of Neanderthals kept Homo sapiens from creating any long-term settlements there. A discovery made recently in France pushes that time frame back some 10,000 years, however, with tools and remains from a child belonging to modern humans dating around 52,000 years ago. This evidence of Homo sapiens lies in between two occupations by Neanderthals, showing that modern humans somehow displaced our cousins for a period of time. Having to share a bunk with a bossy older family member can be the worst. Neanderthals were thought to exist as late as 40 to 35,000 years ago, depending on location. At the very minimum, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals existed together for 10,000 years, likely much more than that. This gave rise to many first meeting for Neanderthals, although it's likely modern humans, having been the latest wave of humanity, would pass along knowledge of their older homonym family as they dispersed outward. The estimated ranges of Neanderthals were thought to be quite isolated. They spread out and colonized many parts of the world, but had little contact with groups outside their local area. When separate groups of Neanderthals met modern humans, it would have been quite a shock. Despite larger, on average, brain sizes, Neanderthals were thought to communicate less efficiently than modern humans, with some scientists thinking they couldn't make all the verbal sounds Homo sapiens can. It is believed that the complexity of Neanderthal life did necessitate a language, and probably a fairly developed series of them, considering time frames and relative isolation. This meant that Homo sapiens and Neanderthal initial communication would have been hindered while we figured out what each other was talking about repeatedly. Fortunately, Neanderthals were experienced artists able to convey meaning and emotion through the artistic medium. While time has erased so many fragments of the past, we still have paintings and examples of jewelry that could have been avenues each group could have shared meaning with. 
Luckily, Neanderthals and modern humans, with a certain amount of initial difficulty, would have been able to communicate relatively well. Trade and transfer of knowledge would be the most peaceful outcome of such meetings. Negotiations over game and gathering, water, lodging and other necessities would have to occur. Stories, legends, myths and gossip would pass between the groups. We know a different kind of transfer happened when Neanderthal and modern human met because traces of Neanderthal DNA exist in a significant number of human genes today. Communication doesn't mean an absence of conflict, however, and while we might think of Neanderthals as big, hulking, powerful cavemen, the truth is that in any violent confrontation, they would almost certainly have been the underdog. Modern humans used more sophisticated tools in every aspect of life. Modern humans could hunt bigger and better game easier, gather more productively, create safer and more comfortable homes, and had more dangerous weapons. Neanderthal technology, while advanced and significant, was unable to match Homo sapiens. It wasn't just technology that adversely affected Neanderthals when dealing with Homo sapiens. Modern humans brought with them new diseases, which would have been deadly for the relatively isolated Neanderthals. It is debated whether Neanderthals healed as well as modern humans due to the signs of trauma on their remains that have been found. It is known that populations of Neanderthals have shown signs of inbreeding, with the majority of one group showing birth defects from a site in Sidron Cave. A high percentage of Neanderthals never made it to 40, and their infant mortality rate was almost 50%. When conflicts did occur, Neanderthals had a tough time recovering and were likely outbred by their competitors. Modern humans probably contributed to the decline of Neanderthals, but changing climate and Homo neanderthalensis' own low population and growth were part of the equation as well. A recent study on Neanderthal tools of the northern Iberian Peninsula showed that after a long period of habitation, there was a gap in the fossil record where there were no Neanderthals or humans. Then later, a different group of Neanderthals came to the area. This suggests that the Neanderthals were dying out in the area before modern humans ever showed up. Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis met many times in the course of ancient history. We can only imagine what each group thought of one another and how they behaved in times of peace, of conflict, of prosperity and tragedy. We do know that Neanderthals didn't just disappear with no trace one day, as we carry the proof of their existence with us. Variations abound. Somewhere between 1% and 8% of European or Asian genomes can be attributed to Neanderthals. A much smaller ratio exists in Africa, as Neanderthals never returned to the continent in numbers significant enough to leave a considerable genetic trace. Large portions of the Neanderthal DNA seem to be non-coding, that is, having no discernible function. Some of the parts we know the function of seem to have a lot to do with immune systems, both vulnerabilities and beneficial adaptions. Other portions might have traits coded to them that allow for living more comfortably in northern climates, like one version of the gene related to having red hair. Some scientists even implicate Neanderthal DNA in some functions of brain and body development. So could Neanderthal and modern humans exist together for thousands of years and more? Yes, they could have, and most probably did. For a period longer than recorded history, these two variations of the hominin family lived at the same time, and proof of their existence lay atop one another in the fossil record. Many times, those records intermingle and show a shared habitation over archaic eras. We can look back over our time together and appreciate what might have been, while scientists forever attempt to gather the facts enough to give a clear picture of a family meeting. If you still need more knowledge of ancient humans, please check out our videos about Homo erectus, Neanderthals and Denisovans. And please like and subscribe to A Day in History. And remember, if Neanderthals and Homo sapiens could live together for 10 millennia, you can probably get along with your bratty little sibling for another day, if you have to.